Hey, welcome to the Book Asylum. I am JL Folk. We also have Dungeon Dan with us. And today I am so excited to announce we have Nick Clausen with us. If you don't know this guy, you need to. Um, he is the author of Cadaver and Dead Meat and quite a few other ones that I've noticed from your website. But those are my two favorite and those are the most recent ones that I've listened to and or read. Oh my God, Nick, thank you. I'm fangirling. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. How are you? Thank you. I'm, I'm very well. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now you're over in Denmark, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's, it's 7 PM right now. Yeah. So we'll keep it, we'll keep yeah. it where, uh, you know, we'll try and keep this to a minimum and, um, make sure that we get out everything that we wanted to know. But so when I, my first question is, let's lead you into it with something easy. When did you start writing? Um, when I was, <clears throat> well, you know, it's, it's 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 the classic story really of uh, as soon as i i learned to to write uh, i i would make up stories and, and write them down uh, i i would i would draw them at first uh, and have my mom fill in some some texts um but then as soon as i got uh, more confident in writing and all that i i started started writing it so really as far as i can remember back i i would i would write stories and then uh, when I was uh, like uh, 15, I, I, I kind of got the crazy idea that I wanted to become a real author, like have, have a real book published, and um, and then I forgot all about it for a couple of years. And then once I was 18, I stumbled upon Stephen King's book uh, on writing, and that that was very inspirational to me, really, like the the, the Bible to me. Uh, and he suggests that you start out doing a thousand words a day until. You know, you you get a book published. So I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna do that, and it took me a year and a half before a Danish publisher uh, accepted one of my stories, uh, and it, it came out, and it was called um, The Tide, um, and then quite coincidentally, like fast forward, um, like almost twenty year, twenty years. Uh, and and that story, they come at night. Is the English title? It, it was the first one I translated and and, and put out. Uh, once I I switched to English, uh, I I wrote thirty something books in Danish uh, over a span of well, from when I was eighteen until I don't know ten years, I think. And that's when I finally realized, like the the, the book market, at, at least in my case, was just never gonna cut it for how. One thing was that I wasn't making enough money, and the, the more books I got out, that you know, it, it's just, it, it was just, it, 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 like it, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, rise in income, uh, so um, I, I, I was, I, I finally realized, like the money's not there, and also the, 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 uh, the, the readers and the passion mm -hmm. just aren't there, you know, people just mm -hmm. didn't, didn't, didn't care, you know. I, I, I would write a book and send it to the publisher, then not hear anything for three months, at least, maybe wow. a six months. Yeah, and then they would okay it usually, and, and it would go on through a process that would take a year, maybe a year and a half, until we, we dropped it. it, it went live, they finally printed it and published the darn thing, and then I wouldn't, it would just be crickets for like, for like another six months before a few reviews here and there would start coming in, tr trickling in, but it, it would be all, uh, book bloggers and, and people who were kind of forced to read the book, you know, in, in a polite way. Is, uh, so th th there was, I, I hardly ever heard from any real readers. And by the time that book started receiving reviews, I was like five books down the road. So I barely, could, barely right. I, I could hardly remember it anymore. So, um, yeah, so that, that so it, as you can probably tell, the, the lack of money was one thing, but the lack of uh, feedback and passion from the readers was even more a, a driving force for me when I finally realized I, I need to, to change something. So that, that's when I started to really seriously considering switching to English. And I'm so glad I did. Uh, and uh, that was in 2019. Uh, I started on that adventure. And, uh, and, and the money is a lot better. Let me tell you, it's like 10 times I'm, I'm making 10 times as many as much in English on my English books already. Than, than the uh, about the same amount of books in Danish, wow. so it's it's just a lot faster to, to you know to 
to make make a living out of and uh, but also the the feedback like I, I i just i love americans passion you know the, the, it, it's just they read one book uh, of yours that that they love and and you're just their favorite author yep. and uh, danish people wouldn't mm -hmm. never do that which we, we, was so <laughs> cold-blooded it's just it, it's one of the best book I've, I've ever read. Three stars. You know, it's just that, that's just no three. That, that, that's no fire in our in our belly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, if, if, if you're lucky, if, if, oh. if uh, having a good day, you know. But yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. If they woke up uh, on yeah, the right I'm, side of the bed, you might get three stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's 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 a little. Um, I'm I'm being a a, a bit uh, harsh to get my point across, but uh, <laughs> but it, it yeah, I I was really blown away by by the the feedback uh, I was getting. I was just like, once the first uh, the first couple of books were out and people started noticing me and they 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 told me how much they loved my books. I was just like, mm -hmm. give me more of this. This is what I've been craving for. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Right. I'm, yeah. Yeah. So how did the how did the sales uh did the sales go up once you put it onto audio? Because I, I did pick up Cadaver the first two books and read them the old fashioned way, but it's when I came across your, you know, nine books for Dead Meat, and then um, I bought that, and then I bought Blind Rage, and then I'm now I'm still catching up on the Cadaver um, uh, audio. So, did you get a big increase in sales? Uh, yeah, uh, it's still fairly new because um, obviously ebooks are free to publish and print. Uh, the, the, the printed versions are also free as long as you use the print on demand at, at least. Um, but the audiobooks, they have a pretty high production cost unless you do a royalty split solution, which I've been very lucky to do. I'm, I'm not, a, uh, I, I don't mind talking about the, these. Uh, things, but uh, but I, I think I might not share too much uh, just for for the sake of, of the narrators that I work with. But it's it's uh, it's it's one of those arrangements we have where they they don't get paid paid anything up front, but they receive a lifelong cut of the of the the royalties. So uh, w once I finally got that going, I was like, yes, here here we go with the with the audio because I knew it was such a huge market that I were I, I wasn't tapping into. So it's still fairly new. It's been like a year now, uh, and now I think we're finally caught up. I think all my books are out in audio, and I can definitely tell it's um it's it, it's a big uh, chunk uh, of of extra income that's coming for them. I think like if I take mm -hmm. an overall figure of all my books, uh, the the three formats I have: ebook, uh, uh, the the, the old-fashioned paper books, uh, and 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 audio. I would say ebooks are maybe around 60% and um, paperback somewhere between five and 10% of my overall income. And then the, the rest is, is audio and audio is still growing. So it, it's definitely a, a big market. Audio is uh, gaining a lot of attention now. Uh, it used to be just uh, like long distance truckers would listen to audio books because they're on the road, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. For me, my job had me out and about driving everywhere, and audiobooks was easier. So in America, yeah. audiobooks is really starting to gain a momentum. So I figured yeah. it's going to be a good move to put for any author to put their stuff on audio at some point. I literally yeah. just started doing audio books because I was having a hard time concentrating on the book. But the more that I listened to it and everything like that, the more I was like, oh, yeah, I really do like this because I could listen on the way to work and on the way home when I'm out driving. Because now my job is I, I have a lot of driving that I do. And I, I I don't care who's in the car. They're listening to an audio book about zombies. Right. <laughs> That's what's happening. So <laughs> and driver, that, picks, that you... driver picks the music, passenger shuts his cake hole. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, and that brings it up to, you know, uh, the wrong narrator can totally kill a really good story. But yep. you chose Matt Crow for the books that I've listened to. And that was a great, great choice because Matt Perfect. Crow is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I completely agree. And it's funny because I, I've, I've worked with two narrators, uh, Crow being one and Spencer, the other one. And uh, it, it's it's funny because I, I've picked both narrators the way 
I picked my my girlfriends when I was a teenager. I was too shy to ask anyone, so they they would always pick me, uh, and and that's, oh. that's what happened in both cases with, with the narrators. So they they reached out to me, and of, uh, of course, you know, I listened to their the samples and all that, and I liked them. So it was kind of like two 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 uh, first in, encounters, and I was just like, yeah, I I feel like it's a match. So I, I've been very lucky to work with both of them. You don't look. You don't strike me as the type of guy that had a wait for girls to pick him. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's true. I'm. I'm um, actually after reading your books. I'm actually surprised to hear that you're very shy in real life. That's just that strikes me as funny. But I think that is mm. kind of a necessary thing. Like people who are usually pretty shy or, or pretty reserved are the ones who will write the best things because they've got so much to say that they haven't said, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> which makes sense yeah. on why your books are so good. I, and I cannot, I, I've, I've told everybody that, you know, I come in contact with, if you're a reader and you know, you need to get these books and, Cause I just, I cannot wait for cadaver to come out, come out with the number six. And, um, I guess one thing, um, I just read dead meat. And if any of you don't know, I don't want to spoil it. Um, the whole, what was your vision behind? That's the question I had. That whole interesting <laughs> plot twist of where you're like, how the whole, epidemic started it was so different i've never heard anybody do it and i don't want to give no. it away because I, it just it, it, i don't want to give it away <laughs> it's unique and i love it is it, it so is you'll never see it again what sparked that idea no. oh that's a great question you see um dead meat was one of the uh, series i was already writing on in danish it was one of the mm -hmm. last books uh, I started writing in Danish before I made the switch. So I believe it was back in 2016, 17 or something where, when I got the original idea for it. <clears throat> and um, uh, how I got the idea, it was like, I, I uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I remember now. I, I, I'd actually been holding on for at least 25 books or something and never done anything about zombies. Uh, and I, I touched on every other uh, monster uh, imaginable, um, but I was—I felt like zombies was just uh, like they—they they just had to be done right, and they had to—I uh, I had to serve them justice, and they had to have their own story. Like it, it was—it was pretty easy to find a, a, an idea for a, <clears throat> for a, a very short story with a with a werewolf or whatever. Um, but but zombies was like it, it, it has to be the apocalypse. It has to be big and epic. But I, but I also felt like it had just been done to death. There's so many movies I, I, I could think of, and it was always the same explanations. It was always these very, um, uh, the, the, these. It was always some sort of military experiment, some some sort of um, uh, medical thing uh, that, that had gone wrong. Uh, and and d please don't get me wrong. I love all these uh, uh, movies, and uh, but it, I, I just felt like it, it had just been beaten to death so i felt like i wanted to do something completely original so the thought came to me well how like like the the first zombie uh, like like the the original take on the on the thing what 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 was that and i i just kind of googled around and i found what the the the, the theme yeah, in, in the story where it came uh, from so, yeah yeah so that's that's actually how how i did it and then i, I don't i don't ever plan out my my books so it's just like i just started writing uh, this uh, the the first book and I knew right away I wanted each book to be uh, one day of the story so I, I called it day one uh, right mm -hmm. away uh, and then I I just I, I just had this vision of these poor teenagers being trapped in a basement somewhere with a, a zombie outside the door trying to get in and no nowhere else to get out and and they and 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 there was just no explanation like we were just dropped into the story and they it didn't even know what was going on. Uh, and then, as they made it to the to the second room, I was just like, "Okay, now I'm gonna drop those the, the, these hints for for where where it all how it all started and what it all came from." And so, yeah, that, that's how that's 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 how I got the idea. I think it was so cool. It, it was, was so awesome. Cool. <laughs> well, I, the other thing I really liked about both Dead Meat and Cadaver is your cast of characters. They're young. They're teenagers. Yeah. 
and and in the yeah. in the case of dead meat, a lot of it is just because they're young and stupid and they just they fuck it up and it, and it just <laughs> grows into yeah. a huge problem and then you have yeah. them all running around trying to fix it and i think that's what was so entertaining <laughs> for me is because it's like yeah you know when i was a teenager i would have totally done the same stupid stuff you yeah. know yeah it, it, and yeah. another it, another it, thing it, that i really liked about it was the fact that you also made it very realistic like nobody listens to teenagers nobody's gonna listen to these kids and they didn't and it got even no. bigger out of control right yeah yeah and about the time they do listen well it's too late too late <laughs> and then yeah. everybody yeah. else doesn't know it, it, you just you had a way of propelling the story to where it, it literally as a reader you're just all like oh my god i couldn't put it down i read yeah. well a, yeah uh, dead meat I, I was listening to and I I was like I'll go on a run I'll go on a run I was volunteering to go out so I could listen to the book and then when I read because I read cadaver first and cadaver um I, I love first of all love the name Axel main character in cadaver the first book um I just really loved how he was just um you know he he kind of knew a little bit of everything and then he was like no, I'm retarded. I don't know what's going on, you know, <laughs> but, um, but he was trying, he just barely made it a lot of the times and cadaver. I could not put that down. I think I read all five books in two weeks. So I, Whoa. that was, dude, I'm telling you, you got a thing here. <laughs> and I was, I was so hooked. I kept talking about the book and my husband's like, yeah, I know. Okay. You know, I'm not a reader. I read comics and you know, he's like, leave me alone. And I just, I really liked and because the way it all, the way it all, the, even in that book, how everything started. And I think that's what made me so in love with your writing because the way everything started is never the huge. It's never the military experiments. It's never no, the government no. fucked up and let something loose. It's always something we stumbled upon it. It's here now and we're screwed. <laughs> it was so good. I just, and I don't want to give it away. <laughs> But no. your begin. Why did you pick that? And 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 in a backyard, or was it because you dug something up in your backyard, or was it was well, this I, after I, the fact? <laughs> <laughs> no, no it, it it was uh, I, the the idea for this story came first. And, okay, <laughs> and I I I I clearly recall this one because it's it's much newer than Dead Meat. Um, yes. And I, I I remember. Okay, I'm I, I feel up for doing another zombie story. And I wanted mm -hmm. to make it as as epic and as original as Dead Meat, um, and and then I believe I, I can't re remember exactly how I came upon this myth or whatever you want to call it that that's the center of, of this story, but I at the moment I I read about it uh, I, I was just like, okay here's another so great idea for how a zombie apocalypse can start and i've never seen it before so i'm i'm i'm, I'm going to go with it and 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 just like with dead meat i was just like okay so a uh, reader's going to hang me uh, are they going to hate this idea because i i i have never seen it done before so it's it's really uh, yeah it, it it felt completely new and fresh but uh, uh, of course most readers really really love love the idea which uh, which i'm very grateful for um, but I, I really just pick ideas that I feel are very cool, and I love if they are very original. If I haven't read them yes. like ten times See, before, and, and you really succeeded in that because after listening 100%. to Dead Meat, I went right into Cadaver, and even though it's yeah. uh, it's another zombie story, it was a completely different thing, and it felt fresh. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I got wrapped up into it, and I am still listening to them. I, I'm not up to book five yet. But I'm close. Oh, I'm uh, I think I'm finishing up three. I need more. <laughs> so I went ahead and bought. I, I'm going to jump out of. I, I think I'm jumping out of zombie. But I went ahead and bought the the deal that you had for um, blind. Is it blind? Blind rage? Blind furry? What, yeah. What's the blind yeah, series? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, so, it's, yeah, the, the series is called, is called uh, Under the Breaking Sky, and then each book has like Blind Rage, Blind Fury, Blind whatever. Okay. 
Um, you know, first off, I'd already listened to two of them, so I was sold. But that cover, the cover that I saw yeah. for the audio book deal, who does your covers? Because they're all really, really good. Yeah, I know he, he's he's uh, such a talented uh, artist, uh, and <clears throat> and he doesn't really have like <clears throat> like a, like a website or anything I can point to his his name. Um, is is like um one eight seven designs with with a c instead of an s at the end uh and and i, I believe he, he has a facebook page and that's how but i i really found him through through word of mouth because he works with a lot of uh, zombie authors and uh, apoc authors in general so yeah that's how i found him but i'm definitely sticking with him and he's a he's a dream to work with uh, also uh, so yeah he's a great guy um yeah if you, if you wouldn't mind at some point uh send that info over because i'll be honest i want him to do the cover of my first book yeah for two okay, reasons one mean. it's really cool and two it's like well look my cover looks like nick clausen's book <laughs> <laughs> um so when i read the synopsis that sounded it, it doesn't sound like it's a, a zombie story as much as it is some type of a rage killing you know mob killing rage but can you give me just a little taste of what that series is yeah yeah so i was coming off hot from dead meat i believe um yeah i wrote under the wrecking sky in between dead meat and cadaver so uh, <clears throat> so i, I kind of wanted to branch out a little bit into something more um post-apocalyptic in general and not not just uh, the, the the zombie niche uh, that i had kind of been in uh up until then uh, so, so i decided to make the monsters for lack of a better word um feel and act like zombies but they aren't really zombies um so i i my hope was that zombie fans would still enjoy it and people who didn't care too much about zombies would say okay I'm, we're gonna give it a try it, it's it's not really zombies so uh, so i was kind of straddling that line and i think the biggest inspiration for uh, the, the the monsters the, the blind folks as they're known in the story is uh is um what's it called cell by, by, by stephen king you know where uh, yeah all, all i know i read that, that. Yeah. yeah i read that story and wasn't didn't they do a movie on that with like john kuzak or something yeah yeah i, I think i made it halfway through it or something it, it's unfortunately not not that great it was as far as I remember. yeah i mean compared to the novel it, it i couldn't mm. quite get through it either no so i no. i looked through uh, of course Jen and I both did a lot of research and your other books, um, I, I non zombie. And it's just like my, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to work overtime to get all these books, to be honest yeah. with you, Nick. Um, you've got one that's called the girl who wasn't there. Uh, yeah. And again, the cover's amazing human flesh. That's, that's going to be my next buy. So, is, are we looking at a creature here? Uh, yeah, it, it's the, the 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 myth of the Wendigo, uh, like the North American okay. Canadian, yeah, type of cannibalistic. I don't know what what to call it, but uh, but uh, <clears throat> that's actually one of my one of my favorite uh, like monsters, and it, it's not as famous as as the other ones, which is kind of cool and. Uh, I, I did two stories about them, and and you you mentioned both of them right there, uh, and it's, uh, um, they they are very different in how they approach the monster and how it acts, uh, but I think both hold true to to the myth, and uh, actually let, let me just please pluck because it's it's such a great deal, and I really want people to take advantage of it. Um, those two stories, and I don't I can't remember like twenty seven others. In this huge collection, I have called Monsters at Midnight, and it's 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 um, it all smushed into one book, one huge paperback, and one audio book, and and the, the ebook is ninety nine cents this week, like uh, I don't know four more days, I think. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, and um, and the 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 the, the, the audible um, version is like one credit if you want to pick that up. But also, like here's a great trick that I keep sharing with people because readers. No, no, they they don't all know about it, and I only learned about it recently. But if you pick up the Kindle version, like if you find a big book where the Kindle book is very expensive, like ninety nine cent box set maybe, and you pick that up, then the the audio book becomes like three times as cheap, 
Uh, it, it goes yeah. down to like seven or eight uh, cents. Uh, or, it, yeah. Or, excuse me, dollars from like thirty dollars. So yeah. Yeah, I that, use that, that, I use that a for thing. a large series. It's you, you just buy the Kindle, yeah. and then you get like the Whisper Sync, which is the same thing as Audible for like seven bucks. So you yeah, have, you exactly. don't have to use a credit, and you you know I did that for Zombie Fallout. <laughs> that's how I got all my audio yeah. for that one. Because that's yeah, like twenty two exactly. books long now. <laughs> I have a problem. Um, yeah, with that, yeah. That narrator. Oh my God! Here we go. Oh, Jen and her I hate just... for Sean Renette. I'm not a fan. He sounds like his teeth are falling out of his face. <laughs> I, I haven't I mean, heard anything. I, I, I uh, like uh, Matt. Uh, I like uh, Matt. I like Eric. I, yeah. I haven't heard um, Salzman yet, but his voice doesn't grate on my nerves. So, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a good> thing. <laughs> it's sorry, Nick. It's a joke between us because I love um, yeah, Sean Renette. <laughs> And she hates them. So every every well, show, I'm gonna I take a dig, or she yep, will. Yep. <laughs> One <Yeah>. of us will. <laughs> Have you um? Okay. By where you live, um, I would almost expect you to put out some books. And, and I'm sorry if I get this wrong. <laughs> it happens every show anyway. I, I would expect uh, to see some um, Nordic or Viking folklore stories. Uh, I guess that's just the ignorant American in me, but I myself find that very interesting. Um, yeah. And have you thought of doing that, or have you done it? Is one of, is that in one of these books that I haven't read yet? You, well, I think Kadeva could arguably be categorized as as that. It, it is it is like a Norse okay. myth. It, it's uh, yeah, the story revolves around, and as far as I can remember, that's that's the only story I've ever done. Um, because I, to, to be honest, I, I don't find it as, as interesting as I feel American readers do. Like they're, they're very into to Norse and Viking and, and all that. Uh, so that, that's, that's great. I'm, I'm happy to, to, to do it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I felt pretty confident the, the myth of, of, of uh, whoa, I almost gave it away, uh, of, uh, of my series, uh, <laughs> would, would land so well. And, and it did. So, yeah. Okay. I, we had a big resurgence of, of Viking stuff here. Yeah. And while I enjoyed some of the shows, my whole interest came from a bunch of shows that I watched that are more documentary, you know, uh, more they're looking, they're, they're looking into a legend and they, they do a deep dive. And so you get to learn a lot. That's where I got into it. And I think yeah. the first thing yeah. I ever got was they were trying to determine whether the, the way the Vikings navigated uh, across large body of water, if it was true, and it turns out it was, because mm -hmm. they actually built the, the the little stone that you can look through and and the devices, and it was just the most mm -hmm. interesting stuff I'd seen. And it's just like, so I'm more into the historical, but that got me into the folklore and the legend yeah. and all the gods. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. I've just always been drawn yeah, to I, it. I love it. You just yeah. like the big shirtless muscle bearded Brr. guys. I actually I have a thing for Valkyries. I love the whole idea of the Valkyrie and I love the whole idea of the shield maiden. So, which are two separate yeah. people. One's an entity and one's a person, but I that's oh, yeah. I I'm I'm a that strong woman empowering and I just loved how the Vikings or um back when they were called Vikings um I loved how they were very much very they pro women and they they loved their women and they weren't like all these other p people around the world who were like oh, women's just cattle you know I I appreciated where they saw my space in their space so that's what I appreciated I totally get that Jen now go make us a sandwich eh, shut up <laughs> <laughs> you want mayo on yeah, it this yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that, but that, that, that's very cool. Uh, but you know, it's it's so funny because, like, with most most things, it's like uh, we we were taught about the old Norse gods uh, in school mm -hmm. as well, and it was just so dusty and so boring. And like the coolest, the only cool thing was that like that what one of them would would could could like make thunder or something. Like that that's the only thing I remember. And then 
and then as as I grew up and Hollywood got got wind of these and they just turned oh, yeah. them into superheroes and just yep. popped up guys. And yep. It's so sexy now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and really, I mean, it, I, I can't imagine, um, you know, because my friend who lives in our house, every once in a while, she'll send me pictures of, you know, some runes and stuff like that, that she finds on stones that have been there for like, forever. And um, so like, I'm like, Oh, my God, that's so cool. And it's like, the, you guys have grown up with that. So I just assume the sexiness is gone. You know, I just assume yeah. that that's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a stone. It's well, been I think there if since I, yeah, BC, I think if that's <laughs> if that's where you live and that's what you're taught, it's boring. I mean, I think about what they taught us yeah. in school that I yeah. don't remember because I mean, it's yeah. To yeah. us, it's also yeah. dusty and boring, and we're just. And, but other yeah. people are like, you guys dump tea in the harbor to show your independence. You guys told England to f off, and I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah, we did do that, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like you know, it, our bad. Just all, yeah, forgot. You know, you just you forget that you know. While we're romanticizing yeah. your history, yeah, other people are also exactly. romanticizing ours, which is is weird. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah. But I, I like how you I, put I some of it. You did put some of it in the books, and I liked how you used mm. different. Um, even even with. Uh, the other one, the the dead meat one. I I don't want to ruin yeah. it. Even with that I know, one, it's, that one see? is completely. It was it's 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 African. It's not from here or yeah. there. So you know, it was just no. how much research okay. did you have to do for that? Uh, almost none, uh, because I I I I just don't want to do it. Uh, because I'm lazy, <laughs> but I also. <laughs> Way to be I honest, also, there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's absolutely true. Like I, I would just, I would take a thing, like a theme, like, like, like the Wendigo, and I would just like uh, read a, a bit about it and get a feel for it. Whoa, that's cool! I'm just gonna start writing the story, and then if at some point I need to do some research, like I, I, I come to a point in the story where I, I don't know exactly how would it react to this or. How, how would this work out according to the myth? I'll just like Google it quickly and read the first line and then back back to writing again. So it's it it's 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 it I I I, I just I just don't want to get bogged down for for days reading these things. I but but also it's more fresh if I just like get a taste of it and then run with it. I, if that makes sense. And then you it can does. change it up however you want, and I think that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That, exactly. That, and, and you know what? But back when I was writing in Danish, I I wrote this like story of of, of witches that I felt was very cool, and I'm 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 gonna translate it soon and oh, make yeah. it into like a, a small series or something. Yeah, yeah I really like that. Uh, and then when I sent it to the publisher, they they were like, okay, so we're gonna we have we have like a, a friend of the house who who's a who's an expert in 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 these kind of. Uh, things with the, the with the magic and the witches or whatever and i was just like you, you can't do that it's it's a story like i i, I get to uh, it's to you know to make up how, how it works it's yeah fiction. it's fiction exactly but they want to like fact check it <laughs> well we're gonna check with our yeah. scientists our witchcraft scientist over here <laughs> exactly nobody cares about your exactly, witchcraft yeah. scientist <laughs> it's no, my book exactly <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, so that that's really one of one of the reasons why uh, you know what once I switched uh, to English, I also switched to to self publishing, and it's good. just my God, it's just such a relief. It's just no boss, no yeah, it's it's so much better this way. God, it, it, oh, whenever I'm so glad someone, you're happy. Uh, yeah, really, it's it's such a relief. Uh, whenever someone new uh, comes and asks me. Like so, how how would you would you would you advise me to to just go into self publishing or is that kind of lame? Should I should I try to send to a publisher? I'm just like it's it, it's a no brainer. Please don't please don't ask anyone permission to share your stories with the world. Just Never. just do it. I yeah, like, I agree yeah. with that 100. percent Although I must say I do love my publisher because she's a small indie publisher, Angry Ego Publishing. Oh. She's awesome. She's just like. You, you write your book. Just tell me when it's done. I'll edit it and we'll move on. I'm like, great. Yeah, we'll Perfect. put it together and get it out. Yeah. Oh. Just tell That's me what the you think thing. of the cover. Oh, sorry. That's mm -hmm. the nice thing about the indie, yeah. the indie yes. world now. You know, you don't have to worry about the big publisher who wants to make millions or your book is nothing. 
-hmm. The indie publishers will take anybody's story and they'll give you advice, but it's technically your story and they'll publish it for you. Yeah. Or you can just do it yourself. Yeah. You know, (laughs) something to be said about that as well. Um, so when I look through all your titles, Nick, I, and, and I'm sorry if I get this wrong, but I didn't notice any paranormal. Have have you written anything paranormal, ghosts, um, anything like that? Uh, yeah, uh, I do have uh, a couple of stories uh, in my collection, Masters at Midnight, I believe, that are ghost stories. Um, uh yeah, and I, I'm I'm working on a trilogy right now. It's called Ghosts of Grimwood. That's gonna be out oh, later yeah. this year if I'm, if I'm very lucky. Right and so, so that, that that's gonna be like my yeah. It's it's gonna be my first like real step at a at a mean ghost story. Uh, and whenever I do ghost stories, I I either make them sweet and kind of you know sentimental almost. Um, like the, the, there's one story in Monsters at Midnight if. if if um, people are gonna are gonna read their collection, they, I'm sure they'll get what I'm talking about. It's called Eternal Snow, and it's 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 heart wrenching more than it's scary. It's also a little bit creepy, but I, I either like to go that route, or I like to go just all out creepy and just do you know like the, like the the ring or the grudge, you know, make ghosts that are just fucking mean and just wanna you know kill kids and all, all that. So it's it's, yeah. it's very either or when I do ghost stories. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, you are an all-around writer. <laughs> you really are. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm well, I'm excited yeah, to well, get yeah, that it, collection. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I'll be I picking up the. Uh, let's see. I just wrote it down. I can't even remember anything. Monsters at Midnight is that, <laughs> that's what it's called. I'm going to be picking yeah. that up. Oh, so. yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, getting away from books shortly. Um. Your part of the world is really coming to their own in horror movies. I hope you don't mind me doing switching up on you, but some of the best stuff is coming out from over there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I Um, haven't been following. You have to have to name name a few. (laughs) uh, You know, I'm I'm almost afraid to because I didn't look it up to make sure I'm right. But um, you've got uh, Dead Snow Two, which is oh right. um, yeah. Very, very, uh, I'm trying to think, Netherlands, I guess. It, I don't know. It's hilarious. It's over-the-top gory. I loved it. Um, yeah. But there's been some recent ones, and I'm trying to remember the titles. This always happens when I'm on mic. Uh, well, I just, yeah. watched, I just watched a TV show called The Chestnut Man, and that was on and Netflix. Oh, right. oh right. I loved yeah. it. I yeah. loved it. Is there a, real, a legend over there about Chestnut Man? Um, I'm, I, I'm not or sure. Is this I, just I, be, I, I just wasn't sure if it was something that they had come up with because the per, the little girl in there um, made a stick figure out of chestnuts and stuff oh, like that. I've, oh, I've seen this. Now, yeah. now that you said it, I remember it now. Yeah, I loved that show. Okay. And I'm trying to find, there was like the rain the that, rain. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I heard of that one. Yeah, I um, really enjoyed that. That was where like the yeah. rain came down and turned everybody into zombies that it touched, and some girl yeah. and her brother are the only ones alive in an underground bunker. And there's like a bunch of these bunkers across the country, and it was. I like that um, one. I really like that one. Yeah. Ragnarok. Yeah. Love that uh, show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, there, I love yeah, I, I love Danish TV. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, the Kingdom, the haunted uh, hospital show. Uh, they kind of put all the episodes together into a like mini movie over here. Um, oh, okay. That was entertaining. Yeah. I think my first. I, 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 inter- I'm sorry. I- I feel stupid. I, I I haven't heard of any. Like I've I've heard the name. I've heard like the rain, but I haven't watched any of these. I'm sorry. You're okay because you're writing books. You're writing bestsellers. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> I'm the I'm the horror guy in a lot of its movies. Um, I think my first introduction yeah. was Evil Ed. I think that was a Danish film, and it was it was ridiculous in every sense of the word, and everybody loves it. 
yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah well um, we have like a like a twisted sense sense of humor so e even our like horror movies will usually have some some weird fun shit going on <laughs> yeah it's just just bizarre stuff but it's so hilarious to watch um yeah. and you could tell it's yeah. not actually intentional it, it's like the movie's being played straight but it's the dialogue is hilarious. The actors are yes. funny. It, it's it's a perfect mix. Yeah. Um, disaster yeah. films, the same thing. I watched one called The Wave uh, that I thought was really well done. Um, oh yeah, and then yeah. It, it's, it's a, yeah. a German one, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I actually I, watched that one in school because they made us watch it. But yeah, it was very very good. Yeah, the one where the the the, the landslide at the channel just. Oh, I've seen just, that one. Yeah, it was just sent the tidal wave down to the end where, yep. where the little town was. Um, and then they did oh, okay. another so one. They did it, like uh, that, that's not the one moves, I watched. It's not the one you saw? Somewhere. No, he, no, the, 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 the one somewhere. I saw it was like like an experiment with with the with the, with the Nazi something like like the the, the wave, like it, it, it was like a movement like they in, in the eighties or whatever. They they, they did yeah, like this yeah, yeah. creepy experiment. Yeah, yeah. In, in like I know like the a, one you're a, talking a, about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I thought that was the one. Yeah, the one I the one I I watched was uh it was a family. The guy was a seismologist and kept warning him that part of uh I wish I could remember what the waterway is. Uh, a lot of it's cruise lines some, go down it. It's in some bay like area. I thought. Yeah, it might have. It might be in some Greenland street. or something. I don't, but it, it was. It was where, okay. like, the landslide, the the ground would, you know, plummet into the ocean and, and water, tidal wave, and would come yeah. Up and, oh, okay. The and problem being, it's a big deep channel, so when the yes. water gets shoved toward the inland, there's it's a there's a somewhere. resort town there that's going to catch it, you know. Oh. And they do. So. Oh, and then nice. he takes his family yeah. that's left because mom died. He takes a family that you know him and his two kids takes them. And move somewhere else, and then there's like an earthquake. Yeah, it goes to the other side of the the, the land that they yeah. live in. <laughs> so now it's an earthquake, nice. and he's going yeah. down into some crevasse and checking out every. I don't know. It was that one I could not watch. I like. I think I ran out of time. Oh, but the first one I did <laughs> see, and it was really cool. But you guys have some awesome, awesome TV shows and movies over there. Yeah, as well as the book. <laughs> yes, as well as yeah. authors. Oh. So I was talking to Matthew Crow yesterday on the show, and uh, I mentioned that you were going to be coming on to our show. And he said, hey, ask Nick what he found in his backyard. So I'm going to ask you, <laughs> what did you find in your backyard? <laughs> and you didn't touch it, did you? <laughs> Don't no, open it. Uh, <laughs> well, it's... Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, Crow is like an inside guy because he's he's following my my newsletter, and I I'm I'm very open with them with with those guys, and I, I share m too much of my of my personal life. Uh, if you ask my wife and any other sane sane person out there, <laughs> but um, uh, it, it it really all started like it, it started a few months back where I was like suddenly I got into local history and you know we, we talk about Norse myth, 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 myths and all this the old gods and all that and and I was just all of a sudden drawn to like finding out like the the, the town I live in now how old is that and and I look back and it, it's like 150 years old like th that's it that's when the town town started and I was like ah come on that it's 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 not even enough to impress American people you know it's 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 uh it's it's way too young so i so I, I started digging around. I've, I've lived in a few towns around here, and one of them is like from the 1100s. And I was like, okay, now, now we're talking. But then the town that I actually uh, grew up in, uh, it's called Frederickshavn, Frederick's Harper, uh, because it was called something. It was called like Flat Beach, because it has a very flat beach, uh, and people weren't very inventive with names back then, apparently. But then the king, the the, the, the king came around, and and his, his name was Frederick. Frederick in, a, in English, and he was like, "This is a nice place. It's gonna be mine now. So I'm just gonna call it. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna name it after me, like rename it. So that, that's the name of the place. And it's like, it, it they have like like Viking stuff and 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 uh, hi, hi, uh, like these old historical artifacts from from like uh, I think four thousand years BC. So I was like, Jesus. Okay, now we're talking. 
and turns right. out I've been living like miles f from a passage grave. Uh, and if you don't know that what that, what that is or looks like, just Google it. It's just like a you have like a hill, and then there's like an, an opening, like a tunnel going into it with giant yeah. rocks around, and it's just black in there, and it's just so fucking creepy. Uh, and it's in one of my stories. And to, to not give anything away, I'm not gonna say which one it is. But uh, I, I, I was just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you do too. <laughs> But it, it was just like I, I've been living like miles away from one of these. I'm, I'm doing a story about it now, so I, so yeah, I really felt like history was kind of catching up with me. And then, like two weeks ago, I was up here by my my neighbor. We have like one neighbor on our street. We live just outside town. It's like a gravel road, and there's a nice middle aged lady and her son, which is my my age, was there because we were helping her cut down some trees. And he just, when we were done, he just throws out, so when are you going to dig out that bunker on, underneath, underneath the, the ship you have there? I was just like, what, what are you, you're joking, right? And he was like, no, 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 that's, it's like, that's a, that's a, that's a real genuine bunker from like the German bunker from the war down there. Wow. Uh, underneath oh the ship. my God. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt. And and his mom confirmed it. I was like, you guys, you're, you're fucking with me. And they kept saying, no, it's true. And it, I, I, I started looking into it, and I, I just, I just unraveled this crazy narrative. Um, and I've, I've been sharing all this with, with my newsletter, like page long emails, where I tell all of this. Um, it, it, it's just, it's so fascinating. Like the, the story is the guy who lived here before we did. Yeah, we've, we've bought the house six years ago now. And he died two years prior to that, so in 2016 or something. And mm -hmm. he, he, he's just this perfect character from a Stephen King movie. He's like, he's, he's very, he was very clever, and he was very much into military stuff. He worked in the military all his life, not as a soldier, but as, as something other, intelligence or whatever. And he, and he was, uh, he, he drank a lot, and he was very secretive and very moody. And he is the only one we can think of or we can find who has seen this bunker except the guy the, the kid who grew up next door my, my neighbor uh, the guy my age he saw it when he was like eight years old and the guy who lived here asked him to come please help him dig dig out uh, like so, so so they could they could place shit there and then once they started digging they saw like a, like a like concrete steps going down underground and the and um and 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 he said, I, I saw the guy go down there and go into the darkness and be away for a while, and then he came back up and he said, okay, so there's a bunker down there. It's going that way, and then there's a room on the left, and that's it. And the the boy, he was like seven or eight years old. Of course, he asked, can, can I go down there? And the guy was just, nope, there's no way. He refused to let the boy down there, and he didn't say why. And then they jackhammered the concrete steps to pieces and filled it up and put the shit there. And it's just so crazy. Like, why would he insist on that? It was like a flimsy shit that didn't even, they, they didn't need anything. It's just, it was just placed on the ground when we came here. We actually moved it without mm -hmm. knowing. Uh, so why would he place it? Why, why did it have to be right there? Was he like trying to conceal uh, what, what was down there? So we've just uh, researched it to death. We've like found the previous owner going, uh, owners going back all the way to the 70s now. Uh, so some of them are still alive and, and we've asked them and none of them have heard of it. Like the, the local museum have like a, a catalog of all the there are like 500 bunkers in the in in my part of the country in my um, I don't know what it's called in in American but uh, in in my small part of the part of the country and 470 are accounted for so it could theoretically be that one of them is in my backyard oh, uh, yeah. and so we, I've been out there yeah yeah it's it's so insane so that's maybe what's what's in my backyard uh we haven't started digging yet i have dug a little with a shovel but it, it's it's grueling work so we're gonna have a, a small excavator thing come over and, and do the real mm -hmm. digging soon but then as we looked into it we found out that the guy who lived here back when he was alive they he, he dug out for something else like a terrace that, that they built and he found a bone that he's pretty sure is human and uh, like the, the picture is still there online and uh, and, uh, and two helmets like uh, uh, proper german wartime helmets and and he posted them online and said something about does anyone know if this is like a human bone uh, we found these things we knew there was like a tent camp the germans had in our house during the war and, uh -huh. we, can't, and we can't find 
and any other like we've asked everyone and we can't find any like info on it it, it was it it's we only have what this dead drunk guy knew and 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 my neighbor just keeps insisting he was very clever he wouldn't he would know these things and he wouldn't make it make jokes about them so it has to be true and we and we just can't we, can't verify it in any way so yeah it's yeah i'm, I'm just completely wrapped Holy up in it it's so moly. exciting so well, you really basically like a... have you have history buried in your backyard but more importantly yeah. You know what's going to happen when you dig that up? Horror movies start this way. <laughs> it's how horror movies start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some Zom porn. Except zombies. <laughs> it's how yeah. zombies start yeah. sometimes. It, it, it's already, I'm telling you, it's already messing with my head. Like, I, I have the story ready. It's, it's going to be called Bunker of Bone Hill. Uh, and it's, I, 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 like, the other day, I was, uh, I, I took the kids. Uh, if to to uh, they have they have like a bath like a plas plastic tub where they I bathe them in, and then once they're done, I tell them off and send them off mm -hmm. to the mom in the living room, and I empty the, the tubs and all that water goes into the, the down the drain obviously, and and our tank the the shit tank I don't know what's called the the te technical term it is like broken, yeah yeah exactly it it's broken so like the the drain will look 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 for a long time yeah. and it, yeah. it sounds very creepy especially when you're alone and it's dark outside it's nighttime <laughs> and i and I, right. I, I was standing there i'm standing by the sink i just i just imagine hearing hilfe hilfe you know in, in between those blocks like some some german guy you know and i was just like oh god some german soldier was thrown in there in the shit tank to drown by, by, by the Danish resistance people back then and now he's he comes up at night through the sewers and leaves like muddy prints all over the house it's just it's too good to, to not turn into a story what? yeah so, you okay. have to <laughs> you've got oh, it yeah, yeah I'm doing this. <laughs> see now here here's here's where you get really smart so you write the awesome horror story that we're all gonna buy but you document your whole experience digging it up and you sell it as the companion book there you go <laughs> yeah or yeah or more than likely in these days that'll be the actual reason how the zombie apocalypse started in your backyard yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i've seen it <laughs> i've read it <laughs> just saying <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it, it's funny. Like when I when I share this with, with my newsletter, it's 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 like I don't know, eighty percent Americans, and they were all all like, "This is very cool, but please be careful." Uh, <laughs> and and they told me, so "Everybody gets all scared." Kinds of we've all read yeah. that book. <laughs> yeah, we've all yeah, read exactly. that book. I think it's yeah, very I, exciting. I, I, I might be. Yeah, yeah, true, uh, mm -hmm. true, but, uh, and but and but I I might be like completely naive, but I hadn't thought of any any kind of dangers doing it. I was just ready to, to go digging. But then I actually asked the guy at the uh, museum, who's like an expert in bunkers, and he was like, "Oh yeah, fine. You can just you can just just go ahead and dig it up. There's been found like I know two live grenades out of these uh, seven thousand bunkers." We <laughs> I was we've just uncovered. thinking of that. <laughs> yeah. See, I was just thinking that you and I have the same brain. It'd be like, oh, we gotta dig this up. You know, and now only after the fact do you think about unexploded ordnance, you know, disturbing graves. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, and, and mean, fumes and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, apparently, imagine? like it, when the things have been underground under pressure for that long, apparently it's it's not very clever to go just unearth it. Uh, it all kinds of things can have developed down there, apparently. Yeah, yeah. The ordinance oh, itself could yeah. have leaked. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but it's All really cool. If yeah. you don't blow up, I look yeah. forward to finding it out when you when you get it dug oh, up. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Try not to blow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need I'll, more I'll do my books. <laughs> I need to read this whole thing. So, <laughs> um, yeah. so when you um, okay. um when you're not reading or or, wet or writing, I should say, or or digging strange holes in the ground in, in your backyard. What other, what other things do you like to do to kind of just relax and unwind? Or are you one of those that's constantly working? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm constantly working. Although I do, I don't write for that many hours a day. It's like one or two hours, three tops. If I push it past two hours a day, I, I can't keep doing it. And I, I want to keep doing it uh, like for, for long stretches of time. Uh, 
but it's just like we have two two kids uh, that two and four so uh, and uh, and when we recently got a puppy too so it's just it's a lot of work i feel like um and we are very pl- privileged that that now we can live uh, off of my books like all all four of five of us uh, so uh, so i i really want to take advantage of that and the kids aren't away for that for that many hours a day and we we bring them back uh, so so we can spend time with them even though they're extremely stressful most of the time but uh, we, we we do want to have them around as much as possible <laughs> so it's 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 either work or, or the kids and then if i if i should if, if you if you put a gun to my head and i and you want me to mention one hobby it's actually uh like um uh, uh digging into into history it's it's become a real thing for me like right now i'm actually very into u.s history and uh, i've watched these very very interesting um documentaries on, on netflix i do like an hour uh, each night when the kids are off to bed before i i'm so tired i have to go to bed too uh there's one called like the turning point like the bomb and the cold war and turning point and the uh, and uh, the the um uh 911 uh, thing mm-hmm. and and the and the F the the Afghan war and all that and I, I I was obviously I wasn't alive back in in the when the Cold War happened so I I didn't know too much about it uh, but uh, but the the, the the are the, you? The, I'm I'm from '88 so well I, I was like three when it when it ended yeah okay you weren't coherent but you were there I was like <laughs> gee yeah. I was there. <laughs> Now wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, I know you look like you're 12, but God. <laughs> All right, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> but, but but you know when 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 the the terrible attacks happened, when the the 9/11 attacks happened, I was like a, like a teenager, uh, and and I, I I remember thinking back then. Uh, so is it is it like is it like the America that's far away or is it the one that's right next to us? Because I didn't even know the difference between the UK and the US back then. That, that's how little mm-hmm. I knew of it. And all this with with Bush and the war and the weapons of mass destruction that weren't there. It was just like background noise. So now seeing it now with my now, now I feel I know so many Americans now. I write them write with them constantly. I have real relationships to them. All my readers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 just and watching those fucking attacks, it was just I, I almost couldn't watch it. It was just fucking heart wrenching. It was fucking terrible, and I, I feel like I feel like it, I, I I saw it. I, I really experienced it for the first time, and how 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 massive a hit it was. So yeah, so I'm I'm really into into all these things and learning about the war that that happened after and all that. It's really interesting. It's a big difference when you grow up as a child and it happens. You don't really pay attention to it. When you're an adult, you do. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. for me, you know, every everybody in America has their 9-11 story. So for me, I was in a hospital recu- recovering from a surgery when it happened oh. and I watched it on television. You know, and I'm just, you know, oh. I was shocked like everybody else. Um, yeah. I you was know. at work and my children were in daycare. And that was the first mm-hmm. time oh. that I thought. If something ever happens like this again, how how do I handle this with young kids mm-hmm. and having to take care of me and my young children? So that kind of yeah. set me into pe- prepper mode. And so now mm-hmm. I'm like all right. preppered out and everything like that. I, I, I it, it changed my life. And it, yeah, wasn't, I, I it was imagine. a few hundred miles. We had actually one of the planes come over because I lived in Ohio at that time, one of the planes come to, came over and did a Yui in uh, Cleveland. Oh, Jesus. And that's the one that oh, really? crashed in Pennsylvania. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's yeah. that's crazy. See, I, I got I got my prepper part from, I served in the Navy. And, you know, when you go oh. out and you see the rest of the world and how the rest of the world lives and how, how really... Uh, Thin that fabric of what we have is, then I mean it's a wake up call. So for me, you know, it's since I've been in the, in the military, I keep a lot of extra water. I keep canned food supplies because I know how quickly oh. it can go away, and we'll, we're yeah. gonna you know we would be plunged into everything else, and that can happen anywhere. Yes, you know. So, yeah. but yeah, exactly. Weird stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I get, I get your interest in all of this because for me, I'm, I'm I like re, re-dipping into some of the World War II stuff, 
mainly from yeah. you know conversations I have with Scott Baker, you know, because he's a World War II he's buff. War Jeff II Thompson buff. was a World War II buffs, and you know, I oh. I grew up. Yeah, you know, when I grew up, it was Vietnam War and Cold War. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. my parents were World War II, so I didn't really pay attention. Uh, the only thing I knew about Nazis was a few snide remarks because my family, you know, my dad was German type of thing. Mm. But now that I'm learning, yeah. I'm all like, holy crap. I had no idea <laughs> as a child just how complex this stuff is. Now I can't get enough of it. No. Yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 yeah I, I feel the same. And it's it's so crazy. Like, you know, uh, we, we are right next door to germany like it's it, like we're right yeah. on top of them like we have a have a yeah land border with them so we, we just had a front row seat and like my my grandma still remembers them coming to their farm and all that and it, it's just exactly as you said like I, I grew up with it and they talked so much about it in school and i was just like jesus it's over can we just focus on something else yeah but now yeah. As, as now that i'm grown up i've just shit they're, they're still bunkers everywhere they're still like, like they, they were building a wall to keep out American troops for when they knew they were going to come. And they were in my hometown was like besieged and they were going to bomb each other. And it was like the fucking fate of the world hang uh, hung in the balance. It was, it was just yeah. so epic and so terrifying. Yeah. And, and it's only like 75 years ago, 80 years ago. Now it's just, it's, it's crazy to think about now. <laughs> it's relatively recent in the grand scheme of everything. Yeah. And that's I yeah. think what's scary. Yeah. But now it's real because you got yeah. something in your backyard that shows you. Yeah, it's real yeah. for you. I mean, if you've got something tangible, it's yeah. real for you. Yeah. So Yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I hate to say it. We have I know. we've hit the hour mark. I we don't want to let you go, Nick, but maybe we no. can do this again. <laughs> you know, we can pick another Absolutely. day some later in the year. Um, when yeah. your new series is done. Let us know. We'll do a book release party for yeah. you um, and get the word out right away, you know, to anybody, you know, to people that watch us just to let them know you got yeah. new stuff out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you. I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. Absolutely. Um, any, go ahead and tell us all the places that we can find you or, or people can find your books, obviously Amazon, but where, what your website into the show. <laughs> it always happens tell us where to find you that's all i was getting to <laughs> well my if, if 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 you go to my to my website that's that's like my base that's where you find all the links for all the audio all the printed books all the ebooks uh but and also more importantly it's where you sign up for my newsletter because that's really where it's at um i i, I don't do social media i don't i'm not good at them and i don't uh, particularly trust them or enjoy them but the newsletter is really like up up to date like uh, emails almost every week and uh, it's it's very uh, raw and very uh, open and uh, very interesting i hope i feel it's very interesting and i get a lot of feedback so yeah so you, you should really go go sign up if you want to tag along okay that's uh www.nick-clausen.com for anybody who can't read the ticker that's going yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh any final okay. thoughts anything you want to say nick before we we cut out on this uh well yeah i just want to thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure to talk oh, with you it's been a huge pleasure for me and i know jen if we we're yes. like we're uber fans <laughs> yeah so <laughs> <laughs> but, me and him will text each other back and forth like oh my god did you read this on nick's stuff and uh, he's like yeah I, i'm in the process of reading that or no i gotta get that one you know so yeah me and him will message back and forth about your books we we absolutely love your books keep mm -hmm. writing please don't stop don't ever <laughs> stop yeah it's no, great I, even if you unleash yeah. hell with that bunker just keep writing <laughs> yeah. Do, yeah. Do it on your yeah, phone. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I promise. All right. Well, this has been the uh, book asylum. I almost forgot that now, too. <laughs> Where are we at? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm fanboying. I can't help it. <laughs> Jen, you should just take us out on this. I'm, I'm going to flub it. 
And that's the book asylum today, fellas and ladies. Um, we appreciate you being here. Nick, thank you for being here. And from Dungeon Dan and myself, JL Folk, have a great rest of your week. And we look forward to seeing you later. Bye.